This episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up on the latest in ag is a challenge to say the least, but there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic grain and energy solutions born of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up-to-date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. And joining us now to take a look at the market trade action that we saw on Thursday. It was uh, a day we started a bit higher, but then started to kind of leak lower as the dollar moved higher. We got export sales out for the week. We have plenty of things to touch on here to help us walk through it. Our good friend Brian Doherty, Senior Market Advisor at Total Farm Marketing. Brian, good to catch up with you again, sir, and uh, hope you're having a good week so far. You know, Jess, we are. Um, pretty quiet day again at the end, just like yesterday was. Not much change in the grain markets. Um, some strength early. Dollar rallied some. We set back. Uh, equities continue to look good in the last uh, last oh, two-week window, maybe three weeks. So you got to give it to them. They've got this big double bottom on the charts, two bullish key reversals, one, two, three bottom. That's an old trade bottom type thing where you have a low rally back down low, one, two, three. And then if you break out above number two, that looks pretty strong. And that's exactly what it did. Broke above the second uh, uh, second point on the chart and uh, has doubled in value since then from where that initial range was. So some good strength mm -hmm. in the equities, maybe a lot of bargain hunting here lately, uh, or maybe just ideas that the Fed isn't going to be quite as hawkish. Uh, that's a fancy way of saying raising rates as fast. Mm -hmm. I know we saw the Canadian interest rates on Wednesday, European Central Bank on Thursday, then uh, throw in, you mentioned the Fed, there's talk of that interest rate hike next week. So I know we're watching that. I know we got the GDP numbers out for the third quarter as well, Thursday morning up 0.6%. That seemed to be what kind of kicked off the rally in the dollar, Brian. Yeah, and and as and, and then we of course we had grain export sales today, yes. which which yep. were another bit of news, which was good for really good I thought for soybeans, and uh, they finished up a half a cent. So, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of reports. But economically, um, what's interesting is I've been reading a few reports about China. So, so one of our advisors in the company here, they're kind of an information how, and they were looking back when the current president Xi took over, the amount of data that was available to the world transparency and those reports mm -hmm. have continued to shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink so you really don't have a good amount of data coming out of china to really give us a reflection of what their economy might actually look like and if it's really kind of in a downward spiral or we just don't have enough data mm -hmm. and the zero tolerance for covid so that's what's keeping our markets on edge um and then you look at the cash market and gosh, you know, you got problems with the Mississippi, but we still exported a lot of beans on sales and inspections. Corn, pretty dismal. Man, we need to start seeing somebody come to the table and buy. But I think the end users are pretty much hand to mouth and they're recognizing that the Mississippi kind of that main vein to push corn through and out is 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 a tough goal right now. Well, and on export sales as well, you mentioned beans, a good week, corn. Yeah, corn was what it was. We need to see more. Wheat was okay, I thought, on, on Thursday's export report, Brian. Yeah, yeah, no complaints there. So when you look at wheat, all wheat, 19.6 million bushels, solid number there, year-to-date, 434 million. Compares to 463 million at the same time last year, so a little bit behind last year, but not in a bad place. It's corn, 10.4 uh, and mm -hmm. this is a number that's a little concerning. So when you look at the total in corn, 555 million, last year, 1.172 billion. So we're only about 47% of where we were at this point last year. Uh, now there's a lot of time in the marketing year. Remember, we're only in our second month. So things can pick up, but but not off to this like robust start and free buys all summer long, that type of stuff. It's been kind of kind of tough on the corn market here. Well, a little more on the soybeans. You brought up the cash market and we brought up, uh, obviously, exports. It feels like that uh, a lot of soybean processors are just finding a lot of value, uh, combined value, in, in meal and in bean oil right now. I know we maybe saw a little spreading between the two on Thursday, but 
that seems to be the product market seems to be what's really kind of holding up soybeans right now, Brian. Yeah, there and it is. And there's good demand for meal. And just like corn, when you looked at the last USDA report, they actually bumped up the feed usage in corn, a function of um, lack of good pasture conditions. Well, same thing, you know, the hog herd is contracted some, uh, but poultry should be on the recovery and the rise from avian uh, swine flu, bird flu. Um, mm -hmm. And the the net of it is um, a meal market, especially worldwide, is pretty tight supply. Argentina sold a lot of beans lately to China. So China's processors may have more beans inbound to work with, but Argentina may not be the go-to market for soy meal. So between soy meal, and then you talk about soybean oil and the biodiesel and the ramp up of that, uh, it keeps the whole picture pretty precarious. Gosh, one has to wonder if the dollar drops off some, if this could really, you know, spur just a significant amount of new buying, in particular corn. Well, and one has to wonder here with both quarter beans Thursday, I noticed we kind of got up to the top end of those recent trading ranges in both. And then when we didn't have more of a fundamental story to push us higher, we just started to see some of those sell orders come in. And, you know, you mentioned this too, just the tight trading ranges. It just feels like that we're probably not going to get through some of those overhead resistance levels until we have something to push us through it, Brian. And here's the problem. You're October 27th. You do have on the 6th to 10-day forecast yesterday, you've got the entire nation above normal precipitation. So maybe some relief to the dry conditions. Um, you really don't have weather in the Southern Hemisphere that's consequential. So you kind of run into this period here and then uh, it's a little bit early, but you start talking about, well, the market's kind of trading holiday trade. You know, well, we're not quite there. That usually starts around at Thanksgiving, and then if it's slow in the first week of December, then it starts looking ahead to January, Christmas, or Christmas and then January. Um, but th the fact is, it doesn't seem like the market's really biting on anything bullish or bearish right now, and it's become a trader's market. So, so then that becomes self-fulfilling. So what does that mean? Well, traders who bought last week and the week before and the week before and the week before and the week before and then rallied back, they've been able to sell. And if they sold the week before, week before, week before, they've been able to buy back. <laughs> so it becomes a trader's market. Um, option volatility has moved down. Uh, I see where the option trade, a lot of times you see volatility pick up, option volume picks up, so does volatility. That's on the decline. So again, reflective, more sideways range. But the option writers, are selling both the calls and the puts. And so you, you've got just this sort of balancing act where it's just, it's trending water waiting for something. Firm undertone, you'd think with exports as slow as they are in corn, the Mississippi problem, you see corn falling apart, but just talked to a guy in Southern Indiana, he said, we're still 20 over bases. And that makes me scratch my head. Um, out West, you get these firm bases levels. And there's gonna be a lot of corn tugged in, in, in good areas to not so good. For example, North Central, South Dakota looks really good. The ethanol plants in East Central and Southern South Dakota, they don't have a lot of supply this year. Crop was poor. So they're gonna probably pull corn from the North. Corn from the North could also get pulled to the Pacific Northwest on rail. And then it brings up another issue. Are we gonna get a rail strike? Things seem mm -hmm. to be heading that way this week. So just a lot of variables for everyone to sort of Stay on top of monitor, make sure you stay in positions to uh, kind of take care of things, I guess is the way I'm going to put that. Yeah. And, and with that firm basis out there in certain areas, I think it makes some farmers maybe think twice about what they want to do. I think we've talked about this, whether they want to sell off the combine or not, Brian. Yeah, right. And they're going to have to decide soon because harvest is moving right along. We're over 60% yeah. now on corn, 8% on beans. But you're right. We talked about this last week where we're talking to a few farmers who, you know, they're very fortunate this year. They said, I've got really good yields. I've got really good price. And why do I want to store with no carry in the market? So why take that risk? Um, can't disagree. Now, farmers who have uh, a brokerage account or an account where they can retain ownership, my reminder to them is if you sell you know check your boxes if you got the bases you want you got the price you want you know it's telling you to sell and especially when you don't have carry but if you want to stay in the marketplace you're only a phone call away from ownership any day um, so just kind of keep that in mind it doesn't have to be in a storage bin the storage bin gets crop out of the field quickly 
and allows you to manage your fall, manage your supply. But at some point, it's got to move back out, whether it's tomorrow or six months from now. What's the difference if you like the price? Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing is our guest here today. Brian, on the livestock side Thursday, I was pretty disappointed with the uh, export sales, especially pork. Um, what are your thoughts with what we saw on the protein side? I, I, you know, one week of sales in meats, just like in grains, you don't want to read too much into it. But mm -hmm. the market had a heck of a run here. It may be that the futures market ran so fast and cash has been firming that the end users just didn't buy much last week for whatever reason. Uh, and the market was off today. I I can't look too much more beyond that because the cash index price on hogs is trading at 94.47. Uh, golly, you got December hogs at 85.12 today. That's a big discrepancy, and you're only talking six weeks in time difference between when they when they come together. So. Um, I want to think that today was more of a just a, a one of those days where I, I mentioned this before. What happens is the market uh, it, it starts down, and so yesterday had a pretty good surge. So if anybody sold yesterday, maybe somebody says, "Hey, it's going down. I'll sell more." So you get that selling, but you get the unintended selling. That is, the stop orders under the market get triggered, and then you get people who maybe bought today or bought yesterday and go, "Ooh, it's heading the other way. I'm going to get out." So there's a sell. Stop orders a sell. You may get the hedger that's hedged or the tra trader that sold. Market starts down. It's making money. Sells more. Overbought conditions. Um, in this environment, with the with the discount to the cash, I I want to believe that the market is just correcting, and it's in good mm -hmm. shape. How about that cattle trade? I know we've been trying to watch and wait and see what happens in cattle country, uh, feedlot country here this week. What's your thoughts with cattle right now? Cattle, I'm staying supportive. I like the firm undertone. I like the cutout values. I like the way the futures market looks. It's toppy because it rallied so much, but I'm not getting any real big sell signal in that marketplace. What we got is a little bit of an overbought signal into, into stochastics. Got a little bit of a crossover. Got some correction downward here. Not a big correction, um, but I like the underlying cash market continues to me looking steady to firm again. I like the way the cutout markets have moved. I can't really find anything I don't like in livestock other than, again, there may be in some overbought or high level territory on such a good run up here. And, you know, somebody's always coming out with something, it seems negative on the economy. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so but if you take a look at the, the way the st energy market, stock market sort of rebounded here, um, you can kind of overlay the equities or stocks with cattle. It's almost a mirror. So nice to see the rebound. It kind of indicates, when the market was going down, we we're scratching our head a little bit there. Slaughter's manageable. Um, today's 128,000, same as uh, last week. Um, so those aren't exorbitant numbers there. And then when I look at the um, the cutouts, um, Select picked up some pretty good ground uh, here this morning, picking up three bucks, 231. Uh, Choice is 261. It's still a fairly widespread. Tells mm -hmm. us that pretty current. Well, I know I'm looking as well at uh, some of the prices in feedlot country here that have come in uh, this afternoon and uh, ranged 150, 153 out there in the southern live trade, dress trade, 238, 240, even some 244 uh, on the mm -hmm. board in Nebraska. So looking pretty strong, a couple bucks higher there in live and in dress sales here. So I think that's a positive as well, Brian. I think it goes back to Jess. We talked about this pulling cattle ahead into the lot. So the lots yep. got a little full, but that was, I think, in most part, well, one, uh, you know, just poor pasture conditions, dr droughty conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when are we planting ahead of schedule because it's dry, emergence below schedule? So you don't have that winter wheat pasture that's robust and off to a great start. Um, it just looks like the cattle that were pulled ahead, I think, will continue to tell us that unless demand really goes south that the the, the feedlot's going to be pretty current from here on out and so the futures market i think has it right well, brian we always like to get a few thoughts of the dairy market from you as well i know you follow that market pretty closely what do you see yeah. in there this week I, I see a market that i just can't get my hands wrapped around why it's now under 19 in december um but it's been on a pretty acute dump here uh 
Uh, this market peaked in May. It rallied back in mid-September at respectable prices, $22, and it's been basically down since. So December is at 1878. Uh, that takes it right back to where it was right at the end of the year. So you look at that and go, well, what's going on in that market? Why why so high now? Why not so high? You get corn prices that are holding, you know, upper 680s, 690 on the board. Some cash prices higher for dairy. So, I, and, and then you talk to the dairy producer and the industry's uh, analysts and people in the industry, and it's a labor intensive market that needs labor. So I I just don't see any expansion there. So I want to think that it's oversold. The indicators in the stochastics indicate that. Um, but that particular market, I think, is just worried about world prices, China not buying, slowdown in economic conditions in Oceania, and then here at home, just enough supply that the market, nobody's chasing it right now. We're not seeing that strong cheese buying. Now, what you might see at these pullbacks here is you might see both the cheese uh, blocks and barrels all of a sudden just ratchet higher. It wouldn't surprise me all this, you know, holiday buying and mm -hmm. Super Bowl buying, those kind of things. But uh, I don't know, it's been a disappointing market, kind of, kind of a head scratcher there. The amount of percentage change, you go from over $22 to under 19 in, in six weeks. That's a lot of change in a market that doesn't necessarily see a lot of change in the supply. Very true. Very true. Well, Brian, uh, before we wrap it up, any uh, final thoughts for us real quick? Uh, well, one, I, talking to a lot of producers, I think we mentioned this last week, it's even worse this week. They don't know what day of the week it is. So, um, <laughs> you know, be safe is, is yeah. one. Just uh, slow down. It'll get done. Um, those of us a little bit more in the northern Midwest, and uh, I come from a farm, and, you know, fall didn't end in fall for us. Fall ended sometime in January. So, <laughs> you know, getting all the crops in and moved and harvested. and So it'll get done. Um, I think in the corn market, we need to be I, – I, I just I, – I look at that, and I think the bulls are on borrowed time based on the exports. But, you know, they've they've hung in there well. And, and if exports start to kick in or we get some news, but I, I would be a little bit leery that the corn market really hasn't had any kind of harvest pressure, harvest correction, and maybe look at some kind of a you know, fence strategy out in March where you can maybe invest less than a dime um, and, and just have some safety valves. Um, soybeans, I think most farmers are pretty long with sales where they want to be. I really do. I don't think they're... There's a big concern. I'm not real bearish. I think they carry out for 200 million bushels or carry out at 200 currently forecasted for next year. My goodness, that's incredibly small. I think that market has a good groundswell of support. The biggest hindrance has just been what's China going to do? And yet we continue to see good weekly sales. So it's like the market has to be proven that we can sell beans. And we are, despite the Mississippi. And when you look at the, uh, the um, South American equation big big production expected there but there's really no weather of consequence yet well brian great stuff and i know producers want to talk with you and to get some advice and they can give you guys a phone call find you online a lot of great ways to connect with you and the team there at total farm marketing isn't there there sure are um and i would I would make the argument if i had to pick one i'd say pick a phone call give us a, a shout we'll take a um a quick run at it and see what we can do to help you. Otherwise, we've got great resources online, totalfarmmarketing.com, or just shoot me an email. It's Brian with a Y, so Brian at totalfarmmarketing.com. And that number to give them a call, 800-334-9779. With that, Brian Doherty of Total Farm Marketing. Appreciate the time, sir. Have a great weekend. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Jess. Have a great day. Bye-bye. And that is going to do it for Market Talk today. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.